OK, let's look very carefully at some logical statements. Here's P implies Q. So that's written P, that says P implies Q. That's exactly the same as saying P only if Q. And that's the same as saying P is a sufficient condition. to be true. So this one, this only if thing, can be confusing. I'll just put all the other possibilities up first. If we go backwards, that's from Q to P, we could say that Q implies P, but another way of saying that is P is implied by Q. And another way of saying that is P is true if Q is true. Okay, that's not the same as only if. Now we've got if. And this is the same as saying P is a necessary condition. For Q. So if we have an implication that goes in both directions, then we have P is true if and only if Q is true, which we sometimes write if with two Fs to stand for if and only if. And we say also that P is a necessary and sufficient condition for Q. So perhaps I should draw some more separators in here. The thing, the one that often confuses people is this only if one. And I think the problem is that in ordinary life, that is non-mathematical life, we often use only if in a kind of technically incorrect way. So for example, you might say to a child, you can have ice cream only if you eat your broccoli. So you might, you might say, you know, they want ice cream, I want ice cream, I want ice cream. And you say, only if you eat your broccoli. So then the child might eat their broccoli and then demand ice cream. And you might be very mean and say to them, well, I said you could have ice cream only if you ate your broccoli. But I didn't say you could definitely have ice cream if you ate your broccoli. So if you said that, you'd be really mean, right? Because the point is that when we say only if, if you say to someone, can I do such and such, you say only if you something, that's something, then that really, what you really mean is if and only if. Just informally, that's what's happened. And so the trouble is that that means we can get really confused when we start doing it mathematically, where if and only if really mean the opposite kinds of implications. So if you're confused about that, you should really sit down and think about it for a while to convince yourself. So let's try another example. Um, let's say we've got um, night time implies darkness. So night implies darkness. Right? So that means it can only be night time. It is night time only if it is dark. Right? It can only be night time if it's dark. It can't be night time if it's completely broad daylight. Uh, of course, that's not true in, in uh, some times of year at the Northern Pole, for example, but let's ignore that for a second. Um, so that's to say, that says that, that night, it being night time, is a sufficient condition for it to be dark outside. Okay? There are other possible reasons that it could be dark outside. There might be an eclipse. You know, um, it, right. So it's not a necessary condition. If it is dark outside, it isn't necessarily nighttime under some bizarre circumstances. It might not be. But it being nighttime is a sufficient condition for it to be dark outside. So another thing that we could do to try and understand these implications is a, bit be a bit better is that we could draw a truth table. I like truth tables. So here is a truth table. Um, how am I going to write this truth table? So here we've got um, the truth of P, and here we've got the truth of Q. So P is either true or false. 
and Q is either true or false. And what I'm going to write in the middle is whether it can still be true that P implies Q under these circumstances. So if P implies Q, can it be possible that P is true and Q is true? Yes. All right. But can it be true? Can it be possible? You know, it has to be the case that P, if P is true, then Q is true. Is it possible for P to be true without Q being true, if P implies Q? No. Right. This one is false. It is, if P is true, then Q has to be true. That's what P implies Q means. Right. But what about down here? If P is false, is it possible still for, for Q to be true? So we're doing, we're doing P implies Q here. If P is false, is it still possible for Q to be true? Yes, it is. Because this statement only tells us anything about what happens when P is true. If P isn't true, anything is allowed. So if P isn't true, anything is allowed. So both of these things are possible. Okay. So that is very different from the truth table that you'd get out for Q implies P. But you can check that this is the same truth table you get out, perhaps I'll do it over here, for the, for the contrapositive. So let's do one over here. For the contrapositive, which is not Q implies not P. So here again, I'm going to put P, and here I'm going to put Q, true or false, true or false. Okay. So let's try filling in this table. All we know is that if Q isn't true, then P certainly isn't true. So what we've got down here, we've got the places where Q isn't true. And we've got, if Q isn't true, P isn't allowed to be true. So we can't have P being true, right? So this one is not correct. But certainly, if Q, uh, if Q is false, then P has to be false. So this one is true, right? Now, all this is telling us is about what is the case when Q is false. So over here, where Q is true, anything is possible. So if Q is true, P could be true. And if Q is true, P could also be false. It doesn't matter. So now if you look at these two, if you look at these two truth tables, they've turned out to be the same. So this is another way of seeing that P implies Q is the same as not Q implies not P 